Well, Stephen, you were out on the lake the other day in a boat. Is that right? Is that something you want to talk about or no? Uh, no, I was just out on the river uh, enjoying the day. What, was what river were you on? It's a river in here at Columbus. It's Flat Rock River. And uh, I was enjoying the day because on Earth Day, I was out there with my son walking on the river and DNR officer approached me and said I was trespassing. I couldn't be out there on the river and gave me a ticket. What? Wow. Is he right about that? Well, no, he wasn't right about that. He didn't want to argue about it because I guess it was hot and he's not used to, I guess, trumpsing in the woods or whatnot. But he said the uh-huh. property owner, I guess he knows the property owner. And he said the property owner owned one side of the river and the other side of the river. So they're lawfully, he owned the bed of the river. So I couldn't be walking on. I'd have to be able to walk on the water in order to enjoy the river is basically what he's saying. What did you say about that? Hey, well, I said, well, nope, that doesn't pertain to navigable rivers. That's only for non-navigable rivers. Navigable rivers, no one can own the bed of the river because it belongs to the state of Indiana and for the recreation list to use. Did you get it taken care of or are they still giving you a hassle over there? No, they gave me a ticket and I had to go to court and then I had to present the case to the judge, letting her know that it's a navigable river, therefore that no one owns the bed of the river, so I didn't have to have the landowner's permission to be where I was. So she ruled my favor, so it's good oh. to... Ah. You set a precedent. Yeah. Yes, I did. Nice. Because, uh, well, another thing I was saying, I, I, I told the judge, I said, now, if the DNR officer thinks that's private property and the landowner actually thinks it's their property, I said, then I bet Bartholomew County's probably collecting property tax on property that don't even belong to them. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. So they kind of like uh, just uh, dropped it, but now at least we have a river that we can use for recreation without having to worry about DNR running us off of it. God bless you for running through the courts and doing that, Stephen. I guess that's what you got to do, right? You get you get taken down by the man. You gotta you gotta fight it. Well, it's, it always helps to know the law. I yeah. Tell the judges, well, how, how do these guys expect to enforce laws if they're not even aware of what the law is? <laughs> and that's, you know, best case scenario. I mean, they might be doing friends for family or favors like that to where, you know, they cite people for being on the river with their, so they get ticket money. And then, you know, the county gets their tax dollars. Everybody's happy except people that want to actually get out and enjoy the country. So, yeah. Well, yeah. well, I want to. I think. I think today maybe we'll, we'll talk about some homesteading stuff. Um, uh, Desmond Desmond Garrett is, uh, said he was doing some homesteading, but but at the top of the show here, I want <laughs> I want to. There's two things I want to get to. We got some comments from the last uh, episode. Stephen, did you see them? Uh, no, I haven't. Shame on you. <laughs> I should be busy well, being on the river. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you didn't miss much. Uh, you were doing the right thing. I, I was following up with comments. Um, Uncle Bully number two thousand. He. Um, he listened to the episode. He said, I think the host is drunk. Constantly t- <laughs> constantly talking or constantly taking the conversation off track by interrupting and slurring his speech. <laughs> Unprofessional whether he's drunk or not. Sorry, but he ruined it. Oh, man. I'm sorry, Uncle Bully. 2000. What happened was like that Rob Skiba guy, like I, I really look up to him. So I was like worried about the interview, you know, and then I just wanted to let it go as long as possible. So. I was kind of in and out there, so I apologize. I wasn't drunk, and I do want to—I do want to say this: this show is like going to be a little bit different than you guys are used to in regular, like conspiracy type shows. I want to throw some humor into it, you know, lighten it up a little bit. So don't take everything I say totally seriously. <laughs> but we are on a quest for truth here. Uh, Stephen and I. Stephen's the co-host, and I'm the—I'm the quote host. We're both Christians, but we don't always have Christians on the show. We just want to talk about truth. So uh, also, and so, did you guys see that stuff I posted on Facebook about the, the my license plate having a pentagram on it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, and and you you'd be surprised to how how common that is. Um, speaking of which, the uh, the Indianapolis flag is is a, a five pointed star, but it's it's always pointing up. You know, it's got the star and the crossroads, and it's the Indianapolis star. And I went downtown to some of these buildings, like the Columbia Club and the Masonic Lodge, and I looked up and I was like, you know what? They're flying their flag upside down. So I went in, of course, you know me, and I said, is everything all right? And they said, what do you mean is everything all right? And I said, are you under dress of any kind? They said, no. I said, well, your your city flag is upside down. 
And they said, it is. It is. What? And then they looked up and they said, well, how do you know it's upside down? I said, well, unless you're sporting a pentagram. I said, that's not the way the <laughs> six flag goes. But yeah, they do that on a regular basis unless somebody calls them out on it. That's weird, man, because that was a special in God We Trust license plate. Like the, the Indiana state plate now is just like blue, I guess, or it doesn't say God on it. But it's like, oh, if you want it to say God, you can ask for it. If you ask for it, you get a pentagram on it. <laughs> just give me the regular plate, man. Like he said, the, the police officer said I need to get a, a passenger plate. I got pulled over for having the pentagram spray painted over. He's like, oh, no, no problem. No problem, man. Just, uh, just go get a passenger plate, you know. So I was happy with the Greenwood Police Department about that. They could have thrown me in jail again. So <laughs> they didn't. Well, no. They still can. So you're right. You're right. Every yeah. day, is, every day is a new opportunity. Yeah, <laughs> day's not over yet. Oh, uh, okay. That's enough about. It. Well, okay. But for people who heard the last interview, man, I'm real sorry about that, you guys. I, I'm new at this whole hosting thing, so I, I, I was getting my giddies out. You know, I got my own show. Ooh, ooh, I got my own show. So I'm sorry you thought I was drunk. And I'm sorry that I interrupted the guy. Um, but yeah, I won't interrupt this time. Desmond, this man is making a generator. He's doing his own homesteading. Uh, as far as I know, he's, he's self-sufficient. Am I right, Desmond? Um, no, no, I wouldn't. Um, self-sufficient is a very, very, um, almost impossible thing to achieve. Um, and I'm not sure I'd want to, uh, to, to, to that regard. Um, but what, what you kind of strive to is, uh, strive to achieve is, as much independence as you can, uh, but that requires a community. It requires a um, a network because you know you can't do everything yourself. Um, so uh, I've, but I, I would, for the past, uh, I guess, made major strides. I would say within the past five years of um, of 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 food independence as much as I can. So, uh, yeah, we grow a lot of food and we do, you know, we raise chickens. Um, and, uh, probably I'm going to transition into some other animals, uh, probably rabbits for meat, but, uh, um, so yeah, yeah. I'm not, not completely self-sufficient, uh, by any means, you know what I mean? But, uh, I try to every day become more independent as, as, as much as I can. Uh oh. What's like? Can, uh, can I go? Can I, can, I, can I come buy meat from you? Is that something you do, or is it just for yourself? No, right now it's just for myself. Um, and, and 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 because of uh, the nature of you know the world in which we live, it's it's a it's um there's it's there are challenges, if you will, to uh, selling meat. You know, especially uh, um, uh. In the situation uh, where I am right now, it's not like I live on a farm. I live in a in a regular uh, in a in a neighborhood, you know. Um, uh, but um, no, I, I, I pretty much do it for my uh, for myself, friends and family kind of thing. I mean, nothing nothing too major. Um, more more or less relatives, you know, younger younger relatives really who um, they like to come over and you know. Uh, uh, kind of participate in when there's chicks and when we butcher and things of that nature. So, um, but other than that, I've never, I sell eggs, I, I guess you could say I've started selling eggs at work, but beyond that, I really don't uh, do it for any other thing, any other, you know, than myself. It's a business I wouldn't mind getting into, but it, it you know, it's work. It's a business. So <laughs> yeah, I, I think, I, I think at some point, tell me if I'm crazy. Did I see some point you post on Facebook that you were, it, something like, hey, if if I were to sell meat, would anyone buy it? Something like that. Yeah, I, and I've considered it um, many, many times. I'd um, buy it, dude. I'd buy it because I'm not <laughs> I'm not slaughtering anything. Like, I have no idea. Now I could learn, you know, but I'm in the same place you are. Like, I live in the suburbs. Don't know. Well, you know, uh, oddly enough, and I'm sorry, for, but it, there's differences. Let's say in what is required from you if you raise meat, um, and you have someone else slaughter it as opposed to raising meat and slaughtering it yourself. Mm. Uh, there's, you know, legally and, um, you know, as far as all of the regulations and everything uh, involved with that. So it's a bit of a, um, it's a, it's, it's a bit of a challenge, but if we had a little bit more space, we would probably do it for people other than ourselves. Steven, are you on this homesteading vibe? Uh, well, I'm, uh, homesteading. <laughs> <laughs> what does that, what's that word homesteading mean? Obviously the homestead, you know, but You're like it's living a buzzword home now. And, yeah. <laughs> it's a yeah, buzzword. Yeah. Living off, living off the land, living off, uh, your own land or whatnot. 
So, uh, no, I'm just... Uh, what are you going to do when the SHTF, though, Stephen? Uh, run and hide. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't no. know. What, what choice do you have, you know? I just uh, try to have supplies. I mean, you, you can't get to the point to where you have all the goodies because, well, then when it goes down and they start breaking into people's homes, they're, they they're looking yours. for see yeah. what the goodies. Yeah, my strategy is try to be mobile, do like the Indians did, and when they try to come to one location, you're not there, and that's how I do it. I was yeah. talking to a friend of mine, because well, I have no plan other. <laughs> no idea. Um, a friend of mine, well, he was saying he does. he has three bug-out locations that he has mm-hmm. set up, and each of them has a generator in it, and it's like, you know, set up, and he's set up, and, and what he wants to do is when people come to him, you know, and they're like, oh, what are you doing with all that power, boy? He says, hey, I have three places with all this power. And guess what? You can have it. But all you have to do is keep people from killing me and taking our power, you know. And so he, like, puts them to work, you know, uh, on the perimeter walk or whatever, you know. So the people that have all the guns, you know. You... And I was like, wow, that sounds really smart, you know. What do you guys think about that? You definitely have to have a uh, community. I mean, uh, before, if I could... Um... There is no, I, I kind of consider like the apocalypse or the crap hitting the fan. Is it something that's going to happen? We're in that right now. Mm. Like, that's just kind of yeah. how I look at it. We're already experiencing this. This wow. is just, this is what it looks like. <laughs> but um, you're, you're commu- I have people who've constantly said to me, because I've been like this since I was younger. I grew up in a, in a, uh, and my dad was a Texan and his dad was a Texan. But um, uh, I grew up, um, People would always joke and say, "Oh, if the crap is the fan, I'm coming to your house." You know? No, you're not. And and yeah, yeah, I'd always, <laughs> I always laugh, and I'm like, "What well, one? What makes you think I'll be here?" But then <laughs> two, um, uh, you'll never, you know, you think you'll make it this far, but the first hungry faces I'm going to see are that are my neighbors. Mm. They're they're the very first ones. So if I had any inkling of actually staying here and holding this land, which I really don't have any inkling of doing that if things were that bad, but if I did then I would need the people around me in order to protect it. So you kind of have to have enough for your family and friends. Otherwise, it's no use. <laughs> you know, it's just right. Like- well, that's why, yeah, you, we have, I think we have to take it to the community level. Like you just said, you know, like everybody in the community start planning now just so if it happens, you don't all have to come to me, which won't work anyway because, you know, you don't have enough yeah. for everybody. So, but that sounds like something maybe neighborhoods should start doing. And, and like, and here's the excuse, you know, it's like, oh, well, that'd be nice to do that. But nobody has chickens in the suburbs. Well, you do, you know, I actually saw one of my neighbors that does too. And I was like, oh, that's not going to ever happen around here. Boom. Neighbor with the chickens, you know, so it's, it's growing. Yeah, it's growing. There's a lot more. We, we've come across quite a few. There's, there's, um, there's, I can hear chickens in the neighborhood kind of over from my neighborhood. And I mean, you know, it's, it's a growing thing as far as. Uh, the idea of people doing that, but you know, you, it's 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 not the end all, be all of anything, but it helps. Um, it, it it's it's for some people, it's a trend that kind of, or people starting to understand that uh, a little bit more self reliance is needed, and that's really what it is. You can't be t- completely self sufficient, but self reliance uh, is a big help. You kind of to society to be self reliant. What's the first thing that someone could do if they if they want to jump into this, like Joe Joe suburb, like me, you know? Um, I start looking at your food and learning uh, ways in which uh, you can grow food, and and, and I would say that uh, one of the primary things. But but if you were looking at a pure survival stance, um, I would um, I'd say this: Can you go six months without a job right now? And if you can't do that, then what is it, what else is there to prep for, right? I mean, if you kind of think of it in that regard, um, I know a lot of guys that have a lot of guns and a lot of ammo and a lot of other things, you know? And then you say, could you go six months without a job? Or like, heck no, I couldn't do that. Well, then maybe you prep the wrong way. You know? uh, right. <laughs> the basic, start with the basics, right? Like food and water, right? Well, well, yeah, I mean, to a degree, because you're going to eat hunger comes no matter what. So whether you're working, uh, you know, we kind of do this ridiculous thing where we get up in the morning and we go to work somewhere to, to have food, <laughs> right? When we, right. you know, make our own food. Um, but of course, you know, we, we live in a, in, a, in a monetary system, so that's what's uh, hard to do about that. But um, I, I would say, yeah, definitely as far as uh, 
as far as that goes, thinking of along those lines, but um, uh, the ability to grow food, meaning storing food doesn't really, that's one thing, but um, uh, a little bit more long-term plan would be is to be, have the idea of growing as much, being able to grow food is uh, really what it boils down to. Stephen, what would it take for you to start growing your own food? Well, I'd grow food now. I mean, I don't have very much lamb, but just uh, like a parking space size. And I got That's melons it, yeah. and watermelon, cantaloupe and cucumbers and tomatoes and onions. Okay. So right. I grow what I, I, I can, you know, as far as preparing or whatnot. I always feel better if I have a backpack that, you know, has a tarp and, a, uh, you know, like a hammock, mosquito net, a blade, some fish and stuff. You know, it sounds like you got a bug out bag. bag. Yeah, 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 yeah. Acting like you don't know what's up. You got a bug out bag. You got, <laughs> you're growing some stuff. Uh, but yeah, that's not only, not only that, but it's it's also good to learn some of the skills that they had before there were WalMarts. You know, like like braiding twine, like getting the bark. You know, there's certain kind of trees you can take the bark off and you can peel off the inner strips of it, and and right. you uh, pretty much uh, do the the twine twisting with it and making fish traps and snares and learning learning some nature skills is always good to have because yeah. if there's no walmarts it's good to know how to catch a fish or how to make a shelter or how to build a fire now how do you learn oh, i'm sorry go ahead desmond well i'll say yeah your brain there you go is your biggest uh is your biggest asset so uh, a lot of uh people uh, try to acquire so many skills a year they say like every year they try to acquire two skills um Mm. And, and, and that could be anything from hunting to fishing to knife making to uh, electrical work, you know, to anything along those lines. But um, uh, we used to be a society of people that could do things. You know, we used to be that way. Like you, you didn't call a guy for every little thing. Right. Um, uh, your average American, if you will, your average person, let's say 100 years ago or 200 years ago, had skills that we don't have. Yet somehow we find ourselves, you know, the, the, the gall to call ourselves evolved or something. <laughs> or, 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 you know what I mean? But it, right. it, and people say, well, we have this technology and that technology is, well, okay, let me send you out in the middle of the woods to let's see you build a network interface card. You know, and, and, and unless you can do that, you're really just riding off of someone else's brilliance, <laughs> but you can't change your own oil. You know, so let's let's start with that. You know, so yeah, skills. You know, um, are, are a big. It's it's just um, absolutely right. For some people, it's a lifestyle, so they kind of just you know they they either grow up they grew up that way or or uh, what have you. But um, <laughs> whoa. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, it's kind of hard to, you know, where does one start? It's a very hard, you know, hard, hard thing to say. But. Right. Just, so I guess, because I've, I've asked this question in a lot of forums and stuff, I guess kind of what it is is uh, just find, pick one thing and go with that. You know, if you want to start with water, you know, figure out some water. Like you can build a backyard, like survival still in your backyard or something, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, the, the basics are food and water. I, I guess I should say that. Um, you should have the capability to go uh, a, a certain amount of time um, with, with that, with, you know, you ha with filtering water. You need a way to filter water. So one of the first things I tell anyone to do, especially if they have a family, they have little kids, get yourself a really, really good water filter. Because <laughs> you could go, you know, unfortunately, you know, you wouldn't want to have to, but you can go weeks without food. Um, mm. Or eating, you know, whatever it is you have in your house. But if you don't have water, you're screwed. You know, we're talking days, you know, um, not, not even days. Uh, and if and if you're forced to do other things, then disease sets in or, or what have you. And we have all experienced, uh, and one of the reasons I said um, things to prepare for as far as uh, everyone's experienced not having a job, um, there are real life things that, that, that we've all seen. Um, and those are things like hurricanes that we've all seen about or heard a story in the news about, you know, a water alert where people can't drink their own water for, for, for weeks, you know, because of something that, I mean, th these things have happened within the past few years, you know, stories nationwide that we've heard about these things. So um, it just, just makes sense to have water and to have, you know, a way to filter water. So, you know, rainwater collection is one thing, but just a, a, a really nice water filter is um, one of the best things you can do. Um, 
uh, along with, you know, having uh, a certain amount of food and energy as well for, uh, for however many days you deem appropriate for how many people you have to worry about. Steven, do you have a generator? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. It's still in the box. I haven't used it yet. A little Honda. <laughs> <laughs> haven't, haven't used it yet, but it, I was going to say that one of the most beneficial things we have as far as knowledge goes is the Internet. I mean, you would be surprised at how many people put on YouTube different survival skills they've oh, yeah. learned. You just go on there and, and whatever it is you want to do, say, OK, now what would be the most important thing, in my opinion? Having cordage, you know, being able to make your own bowstrings and twine, that, that's that's important. How to build a fire, that's really important. How to make a fish trap on the bank, that's important. Because as long as you got food and you got, you know, you're around water and you got the, the skills to be able to, to make your own fire. I mean, it's it's not that difficult to do. And you should, everybody should at least try it once just so they have that skill. Because when all else fails, I mean... The way I look at it, yeah, it's nice to be in a house. It's nice to have supplies and stuff. But what I'm seeing coming is going to be like, you know, uh, chaos where people are trying to break into homes so they can get supplies because the store. I mean, if you see how they act now, <laughs> okay, when you're when they're getting benefits and getting preferred treatment, if you see how people act now, just think what it's going to be like when there's no food in the stores. Yeah. So, so my 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 opinion is, you know, like the old scriptures, head to the hills kind of thing, you know get out there where people aren't willing to go out there because most people that f- from the city will stay in the city and they don't like to venture out into the woods. And that's, that's where I like to be. So it's nice yeah. to be able to, you know, know how to make your own fire and how to catch your own fish and game. And I like that kind of stuff. So, yeah. yeah. So I never, I never got into that stuff. I'm one of those computer guys, you know, it's like the only skill I got. Like I can't do cars. I can't do fishing, you know, nothing like that. How, like, literally, I'm worthless <laughs> if the power goes out. <laughs> so I guess, like, what I should do is maybe, because I just looked up on YouTube, survival skills, and it's always just oh, so overwhelming, 50-plus survival tips, you know? But probably just pick one, right? Like, learn how to go out and make a fire. Learn how to go out and pitch yeah, a tent. Yeah, watch the different, watch the different, different uh, the bow drill is about the easiest one to make, and just watch them do it. And then just determine to do it yourself. And after a couple times, about three or four times, you're patient. You'll do it. And I'm not patient. It, I know, but if you really depend <laughs> on having a fire and it was cold, <laughs> it'd be nice that's to other, know that you've done it before. That's the other thing. D- does a guy like me even want to survive if the power goes out? Like, you know, would it be would it be easier for me to just die than you know learn all this new stuff? Well, it, it, you have to consider that if if the entire course of human history were a, a, a ruler, you know, a 12 inch ruler, electricity as we know it is is not even a sixteenth of an inch on mm. that ruler. You know what I mean? So you got to ask, how did we live and thrive and were so happy before? We probably weren't. <laughs> <laughs> we're probably miserable. The dark probably, ages. It was horrible. Yeah, it was horrible. No air <laughs> no, Screw that. They said, yeah. they said the Indians, when they met the Indians, every, every surveyor and everybody that I've read anything about when they met them, they said they was really a happy people. They were happy and yeah. they were content. All right. I think there's, there's something to be said about not being part of the system to where happiness is out there, and it's not a matter of having the comforts of luxury yeah. and technology. You ever notice that when the power goes off, like if you've ever been in a major city, that when the power goes off, that there's a, it's almost like an exhale that you, you can there's a certain, you can feel it. Mm. You know what I mean? It's like, uh, mm, mm, and that quiet, and then afterwards, you kind of feel a little bit of a shift in your own. Uh, I don't know. I've, you know, if, I'm an electrician, so I feel <laughs> I'm, kind of, I'm kind of surrounded by it a lot. But um, I don't know. I feel as if I could feel it, especially when there's a blackout or something like that. And the power does go off. Well. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I, I know what you're saying. At least I, not from the literal like uh, lightning or uh, energy field, but just yeah, everyone's like, oh, the power's out. What do we do now? You know. Yeah, it's yeah. I guess we're we're just spoiled, uh, or we're we're you know at a point to where uh, it, the reality is is that if we did lose power in this country for a prolonged period of time, it would be you know uh, mass panic. But if the same thing happened in you know uh, you know Uganda, um, <laughs> they, right, they not... would just go home with their lives. <laughs> <laughs> zero deaths, zero deaths. <laughs> Here there would be millions upon millions dead. 
But the same yeah. thing happened in, you know, in, in any other part of the world. Zero deaths. They would just, you know, oh, okay. Power's out again. Yeah. <laughs> Desmond, do you have a, a solar food dehydrator? I was, I, was, I was looking at that the other day. A solar food dehydrator. Uh, no, no, no. I, 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 I wouldn't mind having one. But uh, no, and, and truth be told, if I had a food dehydrator, it would probably be just about as regular, uh, just, a, just a plug-in food dehydrator for the, for the purposes of, dehi- you know, doing it. But I wouldn't mind building, you know, having the space or something like that. Yeah. What's the point of that? Like, you can store the, the dehydrated stuff. See, I don't know about food, nothing. Yeah, I, oh, I yeah, got, yeah. I got a good one. You got a dehydrator, Steven? Yeah, I got a good good dehydrator. It saves a lot of space. I mean, uh, you you can dehydrate like sweet potatoes, and you can fit in like one jar what would be like in four bags of regular potatoes. So it, it's, it saves a lot of space, and it stores a lot longer. And But then again, it's, it's the importance of having water, especially if you got dehydrated stuff. So you're going to need more water. How does that work? You put water on it and it comes back to life? Yeah, by yep. removing the water uh, during the dehydration process, you remove the things that can make it spoil, if you will, right? They get, um, because that moisture can mold and whatnot, and that's how right. it spoils. It? So by removing that moisture, it lasts a little bit longer. Um, and then you also can rehydrate it, you know, to kind of fluff it back. Yeah. How long does it last? It'll last for years. I mean, years. it's it's really good for backpack stuff because, like, when you're backpacking, yeah. you don't want a lot of weight, so you can take dehydrated food that you know, like pasta and stuff like that, that would normally be really super heavy. You know, when it's when it's fixed, but it's light until you add the water to it. So you're carrying you, up the food you need, but not the the, the liquid. Can you dehydrate? They make, they make all. I was gonna say they make all kinds of things. When I was um. A kid, I was in Boy Scouts, and we uh, we we would do a lot of backpack hiking, and um, we, we hiked um, a significant part of the Appalachian Trail, at least you know, um, over a hundred miles of it, and um, uh, we would always everything was divided out amongst us, and it was all dehydrated, you know, food, and um, we would you know rehydrate it and cook it, and uh, but it was just a great way to carry it, store it. Um, and even divide it up. And it, we had even dehydrated ice cream, I remember. Yeah, that's weird. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it's coming along. Oh, no. I've never tried way, I haven't done a lot of dehydrated, cracked, dehydrated food in a long time, but yeah. All right, on. Well, what else do you guys think is important? I mean, i got topics I can go on to, but I, I want to... Well, Pass it over to you guys. Well, I, th- <laughs> I, thought- I thought the uh, I was going to ask you if, um, if you, you had talked a lot about the pentagram, and and I saw you had posted a few things about the uh, uh, about the Republican Party pentagram, uh, or how the uh, star suddenly became. You know, I think it was two thousand how the the star turned around to a pentagram, and uh, at one point someone had told me, and I don't I'm curious if you, either of you had heard this, that it wasn't actually turned upside down, that it was rotated thirty three degrees. Ah, that's a good point. Uh, well, yeah, that, that that brings us to Fraternal Order of Police. If you look at their logo, the Fraternal Order of Police, it's also a five-pointed star, and they've got included the uh, Masonic handshake and the uh, mm-hmm. all-seeing eye. Yeah. In there. And they got that's the crazy. points that extend past the circle. They got like a circle, and the points of the star extend past the circle, which is supposed to signify like omnipower to where it's you know, breaking free of the circle that's usually used to contain the magic. No, they're not the F the Fraternal Order Police. That's not all the police, or is it? Yeah, that's all the police. They're all in it. Yeah, it's a yeah, like it's, a union. yeah it's, it's almost like a union. Yeah. So what? So that they're totally Masonic. This Fraternal Order Police. Well, I I think I think they are simply because <laughs> the government is just because it was founded that way. Just because yeah. Washington, and the founders of landowner companies, were all Mason, and all his generals in the military were Mason. So that's one of those things that carry on throughout everything so yeah it's it's definitely got its masonic ties yeah they're 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 most just by calling themselves a fraternal organization i mean fraternal organizations are based on masonic organizations if you will um and and there are separate masonic police organizations separate from the fraternal order of of police which is an you know um but yeah they're they're all based on um masonic you know right just like skull and bones if you will is not a masonic organization per se but they're based off of uh 
uh, of masonry. Um, I would, there's some, I don't know, 700, 900, they say organizations that, uh, are fraternal organizations that require you be at least a blue lodge, you know, Mason prior to joining. So where it's just a stepping stone, you have to be a master Mason, if you will, before you join these other organizations. Yeah, like the Fraternal Order Eagles, the ones that donated all these Ten Commandment monuments. <laughs> Thanks Order a lot, guys. <laughs> do you ever do you ever wonder where that star came from? That five pointed star. You remember in school how they taught you how to draw that star? It seems like everybody that went to school was taught how to draw draw that five pointed star. Do you ever do you ever <laughs> yeah. wonder where that came from? Yeah. Well, I understand the connection with Venus and uh, right. and Earth. Uh, as far as how, you know, the, the cross, or as we cross each other, I guess it's uh, five times an eight-year period, uh, it right. forms the, the, the pentagram, um, right. which would be the earliest or the, at least the most natural, other than, you know, the five, uh, it being man, you know, the five points of man, if you will, um, or the symbol of man, if you will, being because of the five. But yeah, Venus would be, um, I, I would think, probably the the most obvious you know, um, verifiable, if you will, origin of it. Yeah, I'd agree. Yeah. So what do you, Desmond, what do you, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't want to pry, I guess, and we can move mm-hmm. on from this if you don't, but you know, oh, like, sure. do you, do you want to talk about like your spiritual beliefs or not? Or, uh, you know, I've always just wondered, cause you, you know, you're in a band called cosmic preachers, you know, it's like real trippy. It's like cool sound of stuff, you know, I just wondered, just curious, for all the fans out there, all the Desmond Garrett fans out there. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, it doesn't I matter? Was, no, it doesn't matter. But, you know, if, well, we Christians believe it does matter because if you don't believe what we do, you're going to hell. <laughs> right. I was I was raised a, a, a Christian um, uh, and went to uh, religious schools, you know, like fundamentalist Christian schools, uh, probably from fifth grade on for a while so very small i mean extremely um hardcore fundamentalist uh right wing praise the lord and pass the ammunition kind of schools ouch and um and then after getting expelled from there uh, (laughs) um i went to a lutheran school for a while um uh, but so I, I guess the long, long and short of it is, is that I, I've, uh, I'm very familiar. I've read the Bible multiple times. I'm well versed in scripture and in, um, in, in theology, if you will, and uh, all of the dogma associated with it. So I considered myself a Christian for a very long time. Um, it's it's kind of hard for me right now to say that I consider myself that um, because I. Uh, I find that it is, um, what's the best way to say it? I, I you believe live it. live up to the expectations that people have on you? No, no, it's not, not even that. Um, I, I find that the movement that was obviously started by a guy who, who would have been called, what, you, Yeshua ben Yosef, if you will, right? Like, what was his, what, what his name wasn't Jesus Christ, right? So... Um, no, that's a title that was that was given. So Yeshua ben Joseph would have been this guy who I don't know if the Essenes or whoever was really into. Um, I guess the point I'm trying to make is is that what Constantine and the Roman Catholic Church put together, which is what we all are forced to follow, if we at least in my eyes, if I call myself a Christian, is not with what I agree. But um, I think there was a movement that was commandeered as most movements are. Um, so I'm really into the study of that movement <laughs> that was commandeered, but I'm not necessarily one uh, going to associate myself in name. Right. With what was I view, view as a commandeered movement. And as, um, and as I view the modern church today, it's not something that I want to be associate it with it because in some ways it's all about the organization and the building and not necessarily the message. Like, uh, hey, for example, I, I, I don't like the fact that churches um, want my money to give away, you know, for, I think they should be growing food. I think that if a church has a big, huge lawn and they pay somebody to cut this grass, which is, you know, ridiculous, I think they should be growing food. And then when families need help, they should be fed. And I think that that's what breaking a loaf means. But I don't think uh, me putting money into a plate for this building and this organization 
necessarily it is what it what it means. Have you ever thought about starting your own church? <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, um, no. I, um, uh, no. Um, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure. I even. Um, I'm not sure how there again, by my understanding of Jesus, how he would have actually even felt with the idea of the church per se, as opposed to go walk around and spread the news on your own. And if they don't like what you're saying, they're not going to keep you around long. <laughs> you know, right. don't even take food with you. Don't even take money with you. Because if you're mm. speaking the truth, someone will take you in. But if you're not, then you're going to have to get right and they will throw you out. So let the people be the judge there. I, I'm not necessarily sure I would want uh, uh, to change that situation where people were coming to me. Right. You, okay. Do you believe he, that Jesus was the son of God? Um, well, I guess that would be a, a, a straight up yes, no you know, answer. Right. Um, that, that's one of those, that's one of those, you know, that's, all... go to hell. that's it. That's it. That's it. You're <laughs> You're Just cut right what you say it. after that, no matter what you say. almost feel as if I could say, yeah. And I like to eat kittens sometimes, you know, it's just, <laughs> but if I believe this, I'm good to go. Right. Um, <laughs> it really doesn't matter. You well, know? no, you, it's, it, it, you know, it's it's a it's your own personal choice, you know. And no, I'm, I, yeah, well, yeah. People I'm do with... like to know that. I know Christians love to know. It's like they yeah, got to know. Yeah. They got to know who they, is they, this guy. Right, and does right. he believe this, or does they won't listen right. to it. Um, well, I, I, I yeah, have to, it, I have to agree with a lot of a lot of things he was saying about as far as the structure and the organization, and as far as Christianity today is pretty much more pagan as far as adopting yes. <laughs> their, their festivals and holidays, this, that, and the other. And I think they had like an ecumenical type of meeting back in the days in the 60s or something where the Catholics and the Protestants got together. And it was like, we got to stop calling each other Catholics and Protestants. We we're all Christians. And so, so they started calling everybody Christians. But yeah, Catholics still call themselves Catholics, but Protestants call themselves Christians. And, and uh, <laughs> that's why I like to consider myself a Protestant because... It's yeah, going to be to yeah. protest the things that aren't true. Right. And most of the things that, you know, the Christmas and the Easter and all that stuff, it's like, I'm sorry, but if it's if it's not true, then you can't pretend it's true. And if December 25th <laughs> is Bell's birthday and the pagans celebrate that as the birth of the sun, there's no reason why I would adopt the same day to celebrate the birthday of Christ. If it's not true, then it's a lie. But yet, you know, Christians, the, their most sacred holiday is, is December 25th, and it's just mind-boggling yeah. to me. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's put up a tree, you know, a Yule log, and and and, right. and you know, yeah. Let's just just go all oh, wow. Saturnalia, if you will. Let's let's right. have a whole you know feast. Yeah, I, I've you. never I've never gotten that. I, I always uh, poke fun at it. You know, the whole Santa Claus thing. Um, uh, but you know, by the so. Yeah, I, but I don't want to seem. I don't want to dodge your question either. <laughs> oh, no, you don't have to answer. You know, what yeah. I mean? but um. You know, it, I guess what you're ultimately asking is, is do I believe in immaculate conception? Yeah, um, that, I guess that's involved with it, yeah, for sure. Well, no, I mean, because other than that, we're all the son of God. So <laughs> it's Stephen, kind of hard to, you know. Stephen, are we all the son of God? <laughs> <laughs> What's that? I, t I just, I like to fact check people on the show because I, I <laughs> Stephen, do you think we're all the son of God? The son of God? No, but I believe we're the sons and daughters of God. That's what he calls us. I mean, we're we're the sons and God. We're the sons and daughters of God. But there's only one, only begotten Son, which was the Word. You know, if you if you understand that the Word was given to man in the form of two tablets that was kept in an ark like an incubator until the Word became flesh and dwelt among man, fulfilling these things. So there is only one that was begotten or or spoken, you know what I'm saying? It's like when, when the crucified Christ died, his spirit went back to the beginning before the beginning. He said, let there be light. Boom. Just like the energy you have a split in Adam, you had the energy of the crucified Christ spirit speaking, let there be light. And the light was the word, which was the son of God. So Christ, the crucified Christ received his inheritance to become God and sit in the throne as God, as the spirit. And the word was the word that he spoke, which was the light. 
which became man and dwelt and fulfilled all things. That's, in my opinion, the mystery of God and how it all actually started with the Big Bang. It's pretty cut and dry. I mean, you know, <laughs> pretty simple. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was, that's like that's such a like what you just said yeah you said it's a mystery of god like it's just insane what you just said it's it, it, uh, desmond did, did that make sense to you what he just said because i mean it, it blows my mind every time he says it like it's just crazy not i mean um to a degree but not um hmm. uh, it, it doesn't hurt him well now like, okay say for example um like I still don't. I still don't. When I hear, I when I hear the, the word, or what I think of when I think of the word, and, and and you were kind of referring to John, you know, if you will. Right. Uh, in the beginning was the word, and the word was, you know, um, with God, and the word was God. Was God, yeah. So uh, you can take that back to in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and He spoke and said that there be light. So it kind of inquires, you know, it, it's kind of one of these things that. Uh, Creation and life, if you will, in general, was spoken into existence. Uh, it was the word, and, and 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 it makes makes me think of oscillation. I mean, just um, uh, frequency, um, uh, wave form, if you will, the the very essence of existence. Um, so it's it's easy for me to think in terms that. Um, you know, speech for one person is just for a, a much higher being is 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 an oscillation. I mean, you know, like when I speak, my voice, but it, it's uh, sound waves are are vibrating, right? Um, and and light itself is is sound waves that 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 or, or, or light or waves that that vibrate at frequencies beyond what we can hear, then we can see, and then beyond the frequencies that we can see is, you know, into the infrared and all these other frequencies and gamma rays and x-rays and all that kind of stuff. But it's all just vibration. Everything is vibration. Everything. Uh, the table that doesn't seem like it's moving is actually oscillating. It's vibration. Everything is. So I can kind of see in a grand scheme of things that word or sound or the... The voice of the creator, if you will, is the fundamental building block of everything that we know. Yeah, do you ever so, see that, like the Discovery Channel where they had that experiment where they had like a metal plate and they had, I don't know if it was graphite dust on it or whatnot, but they would have different tones and the different tones mm -hmm, would yeah, cause extra mm -hmm. geometric patterns? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and they would just put it over a speaker. You can just take a speaker and take a board right. and put the board on a speaker and take sand or what have you, you know, if it's a different color or what have you. But, yeah, the idea is that with different sound frequencies is you would turn the frequency generator and create different, you know what I mean, different different sounds. Yeah. And, uh, it would create different geometric patterns in the in, in the board. Um, yeah. There's there's even experiments that, that, that have been done with uh, ice crystals and water crystals. And um, yeah, Emoto, wasn't that his name? Dr. Yeah, Emoto. Yeah, yeah, the Japanese researcher, I believe he was, yeah. Um, yeah, it's a really fascinating stuff when you think of the nature of uh, existence to that degree. So, um, you know, I don't think we have all the answers and I don't think we're going to have all the answers, but it is very obvious that people for a very, very long time, as long as man has been able to put pen to paper, if you will, has contemplated such things and has seen things at a, at a, at a very basic level uh, that if you will, you know, vibration is everything. Um, so, you know, I, I believe that obviously there is a creator or, or, or a creation, but I don't necessarily follow all of the dogma associated with every religion, you know, with religion per se. Well, that, Nate, like that's the idea of following Jesus, right? You, you throw out religion. Is that right, Stephen? Well, you know, you, you have to have structure. There's structure in heaven and I'm a big believer in structure and whatnot, but as far as organization, as far as, as like, uh, I don't know, just, just, it just, it's just like his, his last dying wish, Christ was on the cross and he said that he wished that we'd be one as he and his father were one. He, he desired the unity, but when you think about Christians who's supposed to have, you know, this picture perfect idea of what it's like to be one they're fragmented in so many different denominations because they got some kind of little exclusive thing like the baptist they baptize and believe you can't be saved without being baptized and 
Pentecost believe you can't be saved unless you speak in tongues. Everybody's right. got their own little glitch, you know, to make them exclusive so they're they're different than everybody else. And that is totally contrary to what he wants, and that, that much I do know. You know, so yeah. as far as organized religion stuff, I th it's all about truth. Because truth will will prevail after the church has crumbled to dust. You know what I'm saying? Right. Uh, I mean, I, I believe it's good for people who have the same faith to come together and to talk and, and, and to edify themselves, you know, and strengthen one another. But I believe you well, can do that on the Internet or what we're doing right now. So, well, yeah, I, that, that, that kind of goes into, um, say, for example, you know, I guess I'm kind of anti-church, if you will. But what you just said um, rings of, uh, you know, where there are two. Of, of, or, or where there are two or more, you know, um, then I'm there kind of thing. Meaning exactly. if, uh, yeah. and I'm trying to think of the verse, but I can't, but you know, um, uh, the, close, close enough. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the, the general idea is, is that, you know, iron sharpens iron, if you will, if, if, if you kind of put your heads together or just the fellowship, if you will, period, um, is something that is a part, an integral part of your spiritual growth. Um, it, it can't just be done on your own. Um, at least uh, along those lines, um, because there are also times where, you know, uh, uh, I guess I use the name Jesus went off to be by himself uh, as well, um, was a major part of, 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 of his routine. Um, but yeah, yeah, I, I, that does, like you say, you could do that anywhere. You can do that on the Internet, like what we're doing here. Desmond, you got a song called uh, Sacred Geometry, and I was always wondering what kind of what that was about or whatever. No, I, I read, read the lyrics and stuff, but I'd like to hear you, you know, explain it. And, and how does, you know, what do you think about Sacred Geometry? Let me just open that up. And did you have to go soon, or do you have maybe another half hour, or what do you think? Um, I, I, I've, uh, yeah, I've got a little bit of, um, I, I probably have a, a good 10, 15 minutes. Um, okay. Steven, how are you doing? Um, I'm good. Uh, sacred Geometry is, uh, well, you know, we're, we're talking about the, uh, I guess we're all pretty familiar with the plutonic solid, you know, if you will. Uh, it's kind of more of a, uh, of, of uh, obviously sacred geometry is kind of the building blocks, if you will. It's kind of a hard thing to explain, you know, uh, without showing the shapes, of yeah. the building blocks of, 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 of the universe. If you will, but the song is really kind of just a, um, the song isn't that serious, if you will. Uh, it's kind of a, um, <laughs> it's kind of a uh, poke, pokes fun at itself a little bit, or pokes fun of the whole rock and roll, um, you know, uh, f philosophy or the rock and roll, um, you know, deepness, if you will. <laughs> um, uh, Dr. Domino, a Dr. Domino song. <laughs> Well, no, I mean, it's not, it's kind of more of an inside joke. I mean, um, uh, uh, <laughs> one of the, if you ever hear the song, it is one of the lyrics is ha ha ha. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> kind, of me, uh, kind of me laughing, but the lyrics are, uh, in the early days we were set in stone and we made this world our own. Um, and it, and it, and it, it kind of applies to the stone monuments and monoliths that we found in the early days, you know, of all over the world that we don't really know what the heck they were for in some regards. In some regards, we do know what they were for. But in the early days, we were set in stone and we made this world our own. We looked to the sky for our earthly needs and they took from us as they pleased. Um, so uh, uh, um, the, the stars, if you will, meaning um, um, numerous things. Uh, yeah, it's all up to interpretation too. I understand. I yeah, just yeah, to hear your interpretation yeah, yeah. Because I saw you guys play that song live, and I was like, I don't, you know, you guys, all the songs you guys play blow me away. Like, Stephen, you guys see? Have you ever seen Cosmic Preachers live, Stephen? No, but I'm going to have to do that. Yeah, man, they have like a saxophone player and a violinist, right? Yeah, yeah, we, our saxophone player plays flute and and, and yeah. saxophone, and yeah, our violinist yeah. is also a vocalist uh, as well. So we. And we, we kind of have a little bit of um, a lot of instrumentation, if you will. We kind of people don't know what to expect out of us. They have no clue when they look at us. You know, they're like, right. what, what are yeah. these guys going to play? You know, um, and we'll play anything from Sabbath to, you know, hardcore sounding stuff to Cheech and Chong. He's right to Henry Mancini, you know, or something a lot more, you know, floaty. You know, so, yeah. 
I really but, do like uh, the Cheech and song you guys play. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Earache <laughs> in my eye. Earache yeah. in my eye. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, but, okay, continue with the lyrics. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, I'm trying to remember them now. Like, uh, I, they, uh, the, the, the stars. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They I mean, took whatever they wanted. It from they please. Uh, heavenly bodies speeding through space and time with their sacred geometry. And that's kind of the, uh, with the chorus. Um, and, in, and in those places, I'm speaking mostly of the planets, if you will. Um, uh, let me see, uh, turning lead to stone, turning rock to steel in the sky, there was a wheel. Uh, and that's just kind of the, uh, as it implies, you know, as we go through time, um, uh, men turned lead to stone and, uh, and they turn rock to steel right, right. and, uh, <laughs> and, and all along they used, uh, if you will, the guidelines and the instructions that they interpreted from the wheel above them. <laughs> that, however, What's the wheel? You know, what, uh, you know is, is, is it is it is it something that um, it's it's Enochian in a way, if you mm. will? Um, uh, is it you know, zodiac? It, well, it, it's it's zodiac, and you know, a lot of these things are interpretation. Meaning, some people feel that um, many of the stories of uh, the Bible, and some pe- can people feel. Some stories of mythology are just a representation of of um, of certain zodiac uh, or astronomical occurrences, um, and, and I guess they, you would call that astral theology, if you will. Right. Um, um, and I'm not necessarily, uh, but um, I've definitely it, I've definitely kind of, learned about that. Yeah, I've kind of just thrown it all out there. So, um, uh, but by the same token. Um, it, 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 the like say a book of like the book of Enoch, which is a lost book, if you will, right? It's not a it's not approved canon for the Bible, but <laughs> yet, but yet mentioned, right? Right. Self mentions the book of Enoch, uh, yeah, or does? Like it. Yeah. Um, so, and in the book of Enoch, it's made quite clear that in, that the knowledge of man <laughs> was given to man by others, right? And that is the knowledge of metallurgy, the knowledge of of of, of chemi- chemistry, the knowledge of of engineering, the knowledge of weaponry, the knowledge of everything from perfume to Prozac. And so, abortions. They came down and taught us abortions too. Thanks, guys. <laughs> right, 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 right. So it's it's make it's up. Really, uh, making thanks, fun of that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. So, but th- there's many interpretations of who that is and what that is, right? Um, but uh, you know, also you know, kind of alluding to like Solomon, you know, and his seventy-two named uh, demons, I guess you could call them, right? right, right. But uh, they're in many ways um, can be viewed as, um, well, I mean, yeah, it's just, uh, it's, 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 it's just, I guess, the tip of the iceberg, if you will, but just kind of a, a funny, not so funny look at the hermetical world around us that <laughs> is hidden in plain sight. <laughs> right. Yeah, it almost. I almost took it as like kind of a, a poke on like a tool song or something, you know, like, <laughs> like no, um, pompous for the sake of you know, like like you were saying, kind of poking yeah. fun at you know, well, like okay, yeah. vague you know allegories and stuff. Like <laughs> I, I liked the song. Like I said, that was the one that stuck out in my head for the most. Earache in my eye was probably a big, just as you mentioned, the Chi Chi Chong song. So earache in my eye is probably a, a, a what what was going through my head. Meaning, I wrote the song thinking about. You know, grooving on stage wearing a pink tutu with mouse ears. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? Kind of like, you know, sticking my tongue out, the stereotypical rock and roll, you know. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of a. <laughs> I love the song, though. It's such a fun song to play. It's punk rock. You don't know how to, <laughs> you don't have to know how to play, man. You just got to be punk. Right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Steven, what do, what do you think about all this? And do you have any questions for Desmond? I know that. I know that you well, guys... as far as the sacred geometry, I was wondering if he knew anything as far as the uh, magic squares and talismans are used as far as the alchemical process of, or the apotheosis. Is there any correlation he can find with the geometria in that? Um, well, yeah, there's a lot. I mean, I guess I'll say uh, first, I'm not a practicing magician. Um, so I'm a, I do study these things uh, just because I find them fascinating, but... I'm uh, in no way, shape, or form a practicing magician. So, um, uh, but yeah, I, I mean, there's a, um, 
I, I, I find uh, that I, I, I see these things and everything. <laughs> you know, the more you learn about them, the more you kind of see them. Um, right. In, in everything. I mean, I'm, I come from a military background, too, military family. And, uh, you know, you, everybody ever look at the Medal of Honor, you know? Right. <laughs> Take What's a on the Medal of Honor? Look at the Medal of Honor. It's, like a, it's pentagram. a pentagram. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, so I, I'll say I grew up in, I grew up in Washington, D.C. Um, so all of the streets of D.C., I mean, every one of those circles that you see is the pentagram, if you will. And, uh, uh, you know, or that are the, the points of the pentagram. Uh, I grew up and, and, and worked and partied and hung out all throughout the streets of DC. And, um, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, these things are hidden in plain sight. Uh, uh, it's, um, uh, a lot of people will say, oh, there's a separation of church and state. And, uh, I can tell you that there's not, to the degree of our, 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 our capital is a temple complex. That's right. what it is. It's not a, a city per se. It is an outright temple complex, but no one would recognize it as such because they wouldn't recognize the religion, if you will, or the, the, the powers that it pays homage to. But it's plain as day right there. You know, It's like you if somebody walked... I'm sorry, say again? You think it's Egyptian? Um, well, it's a little bit, um, the, the, at the, t um, the roots of it, e Egypt was one of the first places, if you will, where, um, such a large repository of this information as we know, as we know it was, was kept, um, and we can trace its roots to. So yes, there's a lot of Egyptian, um, yeah, the, the so, comparison you know, I, was, I was making with that in Egypt was mm -hmm. like, you know, Egypt's three stars and its three pyramids. The three pyramids line up with the three stars of Orion's belt. So they actually mm -hmm. brought heaven down to earth and replicated the celestial on earth to make their king a celestial god. And Washington pretty much did the same thing with the White House and the Capitol and the Washington Monument in replication of the three stars of Virgo constellation. So I was wondering if you saw that it was basically set up to honor the, the trinity of the Egypt or... Well, yeah, I mean, it's very much an as above, so below thing. The reflecting pool kind of gives you the same uh, premise. Um, there's, there's, there's many things to which they pay homage to. Um, a lot of people say that things specifically point to, um, uh, uh, you know, like the belt of, you know, uh, Orion's belt. Um, but by the same token, I see, um, like, say, for example, there's a researcher who's come out uh, lately who's um and i and i guess any sacred and i shouldn't say sacred but any um any golden ratio will work but he's been able to overlay the vitruvian man completely uh you know uh, leonardo da vinci's vitruvian man just because of the ratio which is the human body if you will um but he's been able to lay it out completely uh, in the streets of dc i mean wow. there, are, there are so many things and like if you look at my facebook uh, uh, my Facebook uh, profile picture, you'll see that. That's what it is. It's it's a map of Washington, D.C. Oh, and it's everything it laid in there. Yeah, and what you'll see is Leonardo da Vinci's. Not, and that's because of the ratios, because of the 1, 3, 5, 8, 11, right? Uh, 5, the, 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 the sacred numbers. And, and just about anything would overlay. If you overlay the, tr the Kabbalistic tree of life, that would also overlay. Um, and just as the flower of life overlays over all of D.C. Um so yeah, it's 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 kind of hard, you know. It's kind of like take your pick; they're all there, <laughs> you know. It's yeah. it's so, so much so much is there. Uh, then you just go across the river a bit. Like I said, I grew up here, so you go across the river a bit, and you've got the Pentagon, and you have George Washington's uh, the Masonic Temple also, um, and these things tie into a grander scheme, if you will, as you kind of go up a bit of Google Earth, of um, of even more shapes that that overlay, you know, on top of it all. Um, would you Pentagon. would you would you would you say that the purpose of because going through all this work you know of building these things exactly the way they do and incorporating what they incorporate would you would you say that this is my opinion that the purpose for all this stuff is basically um, for the deification of the founder and its followers it's like a, another way into heaven or another way for immortality you know it's it's um, 
there again, that seems to be the conventional wisdom. Uh, you look at the apotheosis of Washington there in the Capitol, you know, um, uh, which there again, the, 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 uh, he is, um, it's the elevation of him to, 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 to Godhood, if you were to God. Yeah, style. there's a picture, there's a, there's a wood carving of John's vision of the apocalypse and it's a wood graving done like in the 1700s. And it's that exact same picture, but they got Washington sitting on the throne as he who mounts the clouds, seated on the rainbow, surrounded by his host and yeah. heavenly host. And yeah, they include yeah. that, except the heavenly host is all the pagans' pantheon. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, it may have been Scott Onstad or, or uh, the guy who did um, Hidden in Plain Sight, who kind of brought that out too pretty well. Uh, the, the the correlation between the that painting and the older painting, um, in which you know Christ is on the rainbow. In which there's a painting right. of Christ riding a rainbow, this the, the same way. Yeah, you know, it's like what what do these folks really believe, and why do they do what they do? Um, uh, who who knows? But there's you know, it's the hermetical thing. It's Hermes Trismegistus. You know, it's the uh, or Toth or Thoth, you know, whatever you want to call them from from Egypt. Well, the, uh, the, the, the connection the connection I made with Washington and Indianapolis, they was ba both designed by the same people. Yeah, and mm -hmm. it was basically for the same purpose. If you understand the Egyptian uh, magic, you'd have Horus, who would travel with the sun for twelve hours, and then he would go into the underworld. But he'd have to have a house that was built, and it was called the House of Horus. <clears throat> Excuse me, called the House of Horus, and her name was Hathor. And the Indiana State Capitol, they have the House Chambers, and it, they basically changed the state into a goddess. They they actually apotheosized the state of Indiana. And that's what this yeah, mural in the house changes. I wonder if oh, that's so much like uh, Columbia. You know what I mean? How uh, right. Columbia is the right. goddess is created. Yeah. Yeah. Far out. I've never really, I haven't, I have not looked as deeply into Indianapolis or in Indiana as I should. I just find it, um, it's fun. I, we recently played a gig, uh, 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 a few months back, and we were at the uh, downtown Indy, where the um, uh, uh, um, where the Veterans Memorial, DC's Royal Egyptian Mile, if you will. Um, and I, I felt like I was home. It was like, yeah, it's weird. It's just like I'm being at DC and just at another temple, you know, <laughs> playing, you know, right. playing in a. Um, uh, some temple, but yeah, it's, I really need to look into that more because um, I do find the goddess uh, stuff uh, very interesting. Um, well, you, you you really like Indianapolis. I I posted about six different YouTube videos. Uh, send them to John. Maybe you could post them up there so you could get a look at. Because I think you would really dig this information because it's like the National Road that comes out to Indiana. That's actually the path of two ways. And uh -huh. uh, the, the way they use the magic squares, this this path of two ways. They're, they're, it adds up to 13 all the way to Indianapolis to where, you know, he rises at Washington, D.C., and then he goes into the underworld at Indianapolis, and then he's reborn in, in Washington, D.C. It's the same exact Egyptian uh, belief, and Indianapolis and Washington, D.C. Is, is set up to where that's the path of the sun, and then they got the false door in the house chambers to where they, they actually got the three steps. They had three talismans stacked on top of each other for Monument Circle for the circle for this obelisk, the shadow to penetrate the wall of the house chambers, hmm. and the and the and the capital represents the female, and it's pretty it's pretty heavy duty stuff. But I I, I did a bunch of different YouTube videos on. It. I think you really need to check it out. You'd really like the yeah. I definitely will. Well, let me ask you this too. And I, I don't have a whole bunch of time. I have to. Uh, I've only got a few more minutes. But let me. Has anyone noticed that the Lily Building is a pyramid as well? Yeah, I've, yeah. Been inside, I've been inside the Lily Building. Uh, we we did food, when I used to work in the food service. We was bidding on a contract in there, and I thought the swastikas stickers they had everywhere was kind of interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Far out. <laughs> yeah, they have on the floor and then the ceiling. It's like wow, that must have been back in the days. Oh, the Indianapolis Public Library has them too up on their ceiling. Well, they also had the zodiac around the base. There's a lot of stuff in Indianapolis that you would just trip out on if you because you're in Washington D.C. So you know all the different stuff there. Indianapolis is like a microcosm of Washington, D.C. as far as its hidden stuff and stuff that you would say, no way. Yeah, it's very much true. Yeah, it's, it's, um, yeah, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty neat. And, and you kind of have to wonder. Um,
that there's some other deeper connection, um, you know, between the two cities. Would have to be. Yeah, you'd think there'd have to be. They wouldn't go through all that trouble just for mythology or... I mean, uh, it's... Um, I mean, it's one of those things that always made me, uh, made me wonder that. Yeah, I'm sending these videos to you now, Desmond, so... Yeah. Check them out sometime. Yeah, yeah it's pretty well, interesting. Um... I guess yeah, I'm let's go. Uh, yeah. Was there was there anything? Where where are you playing next? Or do you have any? Do you have a have a book coming out or anything? What, what do you got to plug? <laughs> no, uh, no. Just uh, we're working on an album. We're about ninety percent done with it, and I uh, can't wait till that comes out. It's a it's a lot more pedestrian. Uh, we write songs about love, and every now and then I'll poke fun at some things of this nature. But uh, you know, we're we're pretty much just a band. We don't have any deep underlying uh, message. Um, but every now and then I'll, I'll, I'll occult a few things in our songs, if you will. Uh, I like to consider myself a de-occultist, um, meaning I, I kind of bring light to the occult or um, I, I, I like things. I, I like to, um, I, I don't see any reason to keep the, these things secret that a lot of People have tried to, to keep secret. I think that uh, we'll do a great good benefit for people to know. Um, because many of the things that are occulted are just things about how the natural world works. And it's kind of Yeah, but the, pe the people that keep them secret want them to stay secret, um, it seems. But uh, in either of it, uh, we're playing, uh, we're busy in August. We play everywhere from the state fair. We play the State Fair uh, July, I'm sorry, August. Um, well, yeah, you know, it, it, it's it's one of those things where um, uh, uh, it's hidden in plain sight. I, I think the more you see, the more you kind of catch on to how, how, much, it, how much you're being bombarded with, um, uh, you know, everything from subliminal messaging to, um, just symbolism that you you're it's all about how you know or how we work they know more about how we work than we know um and they kind of keep that from us there are certain things in our emotional memory that they can trigger with the symbol with the shape um mm. um you know say for example red and blue you know red and blue is our exact opposites right red and blue meaning Everybody knows Roy G Biv red right. orange yellow uh, green and again, you know, the whole rainbow thing. And of course, violet, we'll just call that blue because violet's in blue. Um, but those are the two <laughs> extremes, you know, whether it be hot, cold, blue, Democrat, Republican. If you get pulled over by the police, they know what symbol is going to break your concentration more than anything. And that's red and blue lights, you know. Um, so uh, it's one of those things that's just inherent to how we work. Um, but we're not always aware of these little things about us that are sometimes used to control us. Do you think uh, we should know this stuff, or do you think it should stay hidden? Um, well, I guess we should know it. But, but I mean, well, what are people going to do with it? If 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 the people that do have it use it to manipulate us, what is J idiot Joe down the street or moron John doing a podcast that's me going to do with it? You know what I mean? We is, or should we be trusted with this stuff? Well, I, I think if if you know, it's it's like the magic trick. If I tell you how the magic trick works, it's not going to necessarily always work. You may just be j equally as entertained by it, but you won't necessarily make your life decisions based on it. So uh, I think people are operating with information that they there's valuable information that they should have that they are being denied, and 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 the people that are denying them this information are used doing it for reasons of manipulation. Um, so I think we're always all better off with a certain amount of truth. Um, or at least having a clue, um, yeah. and then making the decision yourself on whether or not you're gonna you're gonna go along with it. I love movies. I like entertainment, right? I understand that Hollywood is basically just a, a big mind control organism, but I love movies. But yeah. when I walk into the movie, I know this. I understand that the reason why my heart is racing isn't because of this great cinematography. It's because they just pulsed a low, uh, a, a, a low bandwidth. Uh, I mean, a low um, frequency signal to me. You know, with wow. a, with a, with a, and they did it with a cello. Okay, they would mm. with the cello, 
and and it, and, it, and it interrupts my frequency. You know, I know that I have frequency follower response, which means that if you if you bombard my brain with a specific frequency for six minutes, my brain is going to follow it. <laughs> you know, that's just something that happens to human beings. Now, mm. um, not everybody knows this, right? I so know that. you may think that. You know, yeah, well, I mean, you know, a lot of times the majority of the occult are things about us that they just uh, don't want us to know because, you know, but, you know, it doesn't mean that we can't enjoy a movie. So I, enjoy, <laughs> you know, I go and I watch it and I enjoy the movie. But by the same token, I, I feel as if I can make a better decision about some things when I understand the forces that are at work. OK, yeah, just use it to make good decisions and not be manipulated. Exactly. Exactly. Unless I want to be, you know, I need to suspend my disbelief for two hours to watch a movie. Right. Okay. De Desmond Garrett, everybody check him out. Cosmic preachers, uh, website. Oh, uh, www.cosmicpreachers.com. It probably isn't updated worth a darn. So I'll do that within the next 24 hours. And, uh, <laughs> And um, you can check us out on Facebook is a good, good place. Bandcamp, Reverb Nation, all that. Cosmic Preachers. And uh, we are working on our um, first full-length album. We've got an EP and a single out, but we're about 90% done with a full-length 13-track uh, album. And it is uh, some of the finest work uh, we've ever done. So really excited right on. about that. Yeah, man, I, I am too. I'm definitely going to have to get that. Um, when is that coming up? Um, we hope to have it done uh, by the end of September, um, uh, but we we don't have a, a release date or anything yet because, like I said, we're we're, we're still um, we're still working and uh, we still have to press it. Uh, so we're still in the recording process. But we're about ninety percent done with that. But we will be at the state fair. State Fair then. Uh, we're at a um, next um, Saturday. Um, but the I'll, uh, thanks a lot for having me on. I appreciate it. And I stop you. you. Desmond Garrett, everybody. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a good one. You too. Bye -bye. You too. Steven, you still there? Uh, I am. I don't. Wait, how did you think that went? Well, it was interesting. You, you sure had an awful lot of. Uh, knowledge but uh i was i was i was trying to find out what why he had so much knowledge and and uh exactly what it, <laughs> you know it's it's kind of one of those things on the line <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah he, he has all this knowledge of, about these different things but not uh, uh, as far as why they would do it and it seems to me it's it's pretty cut and dry why they would do something. I mean, the only reason that you would follow a recipe is because you want the same kind of cake. So for them to build something in replication of what the Egyptians did, I think they had the same same agenda and purpose in mind. But I'm going to definitely check out his site, though, and listen to some of his music because it's sure pretty good. Yeah, yeah, definitely. He was still on the line when I was saying that. That's what, that's what I was laughing about. Yeah, well... Yeah. Uh, so, Stephen, did you want to talk about that other thing, or, do you, or should we save that for another time? We might probably want to save that for another time, because I've got like five, ten more minutes. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah, that other thing's a doozy, man. And, and, you know, <laughs> it's a doozy. A, yeah, yeah it, you should it's be super heavy. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. yeah. Um, and well, I, I want to be sensitive about that. About this. Stephen has, Stephen has told me some some information that that I'm dying to, to get out there, but at the same time, I don't know if it should be, you know, but, but you said you think it's okay, <laughs> that's right? Where I'm at. Yeah, that's, like, that's where I'm at with it. I don't, I don't know if it's, uh, if it's one of those things that it would have any relevance except to the people who come in contact with me or what? Well, it's almost like, it, you know, what, what happens when, when people hear about the Jesus on a tortilla, you know, right. shell or whatever, you know, they go look at it. Oh, I got to go see it. Yeah, you know, that type of thing. Yeah, I gotta yeah, go see, find I, out if I, it's real. Yeah, I'm trying not. I'm trying to keep a low profile as much as possible because that's just how I roll, pretty much. Well, so I, I, maybe we'll find a way to talk about it or something. But yeah, well, 
Well, that sounds good, man. Th- thanks for doing another show here, Stephen. Do you think? How you? What do you think about this show? Was it better than last time? Am I going to get bad well, YouTube know, comments? I, I, I wouldn't worry too much about what people say. <laughs> it was, uh, there, you're, somebody's always going to be saying something. You know, I got over that a long, long time ago. It's you know whether they say something good or bad about you, but they'll be talking about you. So just be yourself, and and you know naysayers will be naysayers, and the people that are meant to hear and understand will hear and understand, and. Other than that, it's always it's always interesting to get people together and get the different bits and pieces of information that you can't really get when you're by yourself. Yeah. Well, Stephen, what do you think we should talk about next week? Oh, I'm sure something will come up this week that we'll have to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Well, all right, Stephen. Well, hey, thanks a lot, man. You have a good night. All right. You too. Take care, buddy. Bye. All right. God, God bless. You too. Thank you.